Hi everyone, it's Mark with Cricket Bat Info and today I'm coming back at you with a brand new bat, well brand I haven't done before, which is uh, a Malik Bubbashir Laminate. Now Vishal from Sydney, he's sent this in. He actually resells these, he's got a page on Facebook, he's asked me to plug, it's called uh, Laminate Cricket Bats um, with a capital L. I'll leave the link in the description. Claims that these bats are as good as player bats and I haven't tapped it up. This is his actual uh, personal bat. He's actually done an oil on it. So just a reminder before we crack on, I've got the HR Sports bat that I did the custom label on. I'll put the link up there. If you haven't entered the contest, even if you can share it on, once we hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm giving that away with free shipping uh, to anybody in Australia. And if you live overseas, you have to cover the difference. That's all. Uh, but it's got a set of gloves, the bat, it's all fully knocked and it's got those custom stickers that I designed in that video. So have a look at that. This is uh, a Malik and I haven't done an MB Malik uh, on the channel ever before. Um, it's really hard, I guess, with trade sanctions to get bats from Pakistan. But I mean, when I was a kid, my old man lived over in Pakistan for a few years and, and he bought me back a few Istans, so I had a few of those. This one here is a laminate. Now, best way I can show that to you is via the toe. Um, you can see right here, you've got the clear line between the front willow and the piece that's glued onto the back. This one, you've got a clear, you know, centimetre, so it'd probably be a centimetre and a half before pressing. Basically, it gives it a fuller shape. They say that it's grade one on the front. I'd probably argue that's not grade one face. I'd probably call that grade two with blemishes uh, here. You've got knots and things like that. And on the back, um, that's one, two, three, four, five grains wavy probably grade three. Benefit of having two clefts glued together, uh, well for the bat maker, they can take one cleft and make two or three bats uh, with potentially the same performance characteristics of the original cleft and they also get to use their cheaper willow which would be harder for them to get rid of. Laminate itself, um, that gives it the benefit of having that layer of glue. It's hard in itself and it has a rebound characteristic. Uh, but also it creates a, sh a line across the bat which will prevent any sort of cracks, you'd hope, from going all the way through because there's a clear break um, in the woods. Yeah, but Malik, uh, I've never done them and they've, to me, that the brand, you know, reading a lot about them on custom bats uh, back in the day when I was really into it and buying bats all the time, you know, got that real bug uh, like many of you would have and yeah, the, the general feedback was, yeah, good bats, uh, but handles. That's the cover. Uh, it's got that type of uh, black paper and it's been heavily dyed. And I don't know if I can actually make it do it, but um, definitely see that rub off on oiled bats. Just wrapped in bubble wrap and uh, two lots of that and lots of bubble wrap. And it didn't actually get damaged, but I do actually uh, say to you, or if you are sending bats anywhere, not just to me, um, do think about just heading down to your local Bunnings or your hardware shop. Um, I was down there today, bought some bits and pieces, and I got these two long boxes. That, you know, a good decent cardboard box is is going to save you the frustration of some uh, bozo dropping it on the edge of the steps accidentally, and you know, putting a big dent in your in the front of your bat or the back of your bat. Can't really comment too much on the finish because he's actually really gone to town with some sort of heavy grit um, on the face. I can see lines heading off in different directions. I don't know what he's used, maybe a 120 or something like that. Just to oil a bat, I would probably only rub it down with 240 and rub up and down the grain, not across it uh, like that. You can see there, he's, he's probably right-handed and he's, and he's come through and as he's sort of doing it, his hands sort of coming right across the grain. So I probably will actually run the sander over this and fix it up for him, to be honest. Uh, he's actually sent it over to me to do a knocking on. Now I charge a token amount, which go, I reinvest in the channel and uh, and the cost, but you know, like I don't want to do knocking for people. So don't contact me just to, oh, Mark does knocking, I'll send him all my bats. I haven't got time for that. Just want your bats not go to a knocking store. If you want to support the channel, please send bats to review. I've got a full knocking video. I'll put a link to that up there and I'll also put uh, links in the description. Anyway, the uh, oiling has brought up the uh, grains. We can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven grains across there. 
Uh, we've got some sort of knotting here really close to the, the edge and the face. Um, we've got a couple of pin knots here. Pin knots generally don't do anything to performance whatsoever, so I'm not wouldn't be too worried. The grains themselves, even, it's, Eng it's English willow, I, I wouldn't doubt that. Finishing on the back, look, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay, it's, it's smooth enough. And this one's really got a big domed uh, look on it. Have a look at that, it's really convex. You know, you put this on, on the bat and it gets stuck. This is actually a big, big bat. And, you know, if I take it and show it to you that way, um, you can see that getting stuck. So you can also see a little bit of narrowing, but yeah, it can't go through the gauge. So it's illegal um, if you're in a standard that they're gonna measure the bat, but it's also completely illegal uh, in all forms of competitive cricket because it's a laminated cricket bat. History of this is, I think it was Graham Gooch used to use one. You know, leave some comments and, and talk about the history if you know it. Uh, but I think it was, was it a 333 or something like that? He had a turbo and they were, they were actually um, laminated uh, and they gave that extra performance, so they, they got banned. So yeah, there is a performance thing. Uh, let's do some measurements. Here's with this one. It seems to have uh, decided to go for a holiday. Starting up here at the shoulders. Fifteen point three, top of the splice, thirty three. So very narrowed up here. Uh, we'll do that edge. Forty three point six. The toe looks fairly thick. Twenty one, and over here, center of the toe. 25.7. We'll give the uh, spine a measure. Oh, 63. Okay. So yeah, there's, it's not actually a, a five uh, millimeter camber face. So when you actually put that on the face, you can see a gap there. Yeah. So generally if you've got full convex shapes, you're not really going to get them filling the gauge. The thought process of uh, doing the convex shape is you know, widening the, the, the focus point of the, of the performance, um, making a bigger middle uh, as opposed to scooping, which could potentially narrow it. I don't know uh, whether that's true. I think you try and get too sciencey. The best thing you can do in cricket is actually watch the ball and hit it in the middle. The width of the bat, 106, 107. Okay, 105. Okay. Yeah. 104.6 down here. Yep, so that's pretty common. It seems to be what's happening. The market is forcing them to try and make these big full shapes that, you know, the avenue that they had to lower the weight of the bats previously was to do the concaving, taking wood out and balancing the shape. The only other way they can do it is by narrowing the cleft. And generally I find that narrowed clefts actually do pick up okay. Like they actually feel okay in the hands. It sort of it gives that benefit like if you were doing some concaving. I'm still not happy when I see um, over a thousand dollar bats that, that are shaving their you know, bats to make a weight. You know, like don't just simple, just don't charge that sort of money. Let's have a look at the handle. Uh, it's got a bit of a semi-oval shape at the top, which I don't actually mind. It's not just round, and it's round at the top of the handle. So there's actually a good grip there, uh, and it's actually got some counterbalancing. See that big knob on the end of it? No, not me. I'm talking about this thing here. Um, that's a counterbalance handle, a lot bigger than a standard uh, tip of your handle, and you can see that when I roll grip down. Um, just how big that is compared to a normal handle tip. Uh, interestingly, we've got five inserts, uh, one being a green rubber, fairly thick and some thinner ones. So I've never seen a Malik handle before. Uh, and I have asked some people, these are definitely made by Malik, they're not for the fakes. Well, there are a lot of Malik fakes uh, out there. Yeah, unfortunately, 
that brings a, a good name. You know, these were, these were fairly popular uh, 20 years ago. Um, you would see them on the international circuit when we had a lot of games with Pakistan. Um, you know, the top players were using these. Not the, not the laminates, but uh, Malex. So yeah, it's a bit of a, a fall, I guess. Now, one thing I did notice, and I'm gonna comment on it right away, is I'm not really impressed down here. This binding here, you can see, I can actually lift that. See that there? And it's actually separating it off. Now, because I'm gonna be knocking this, I'll fix this myself for the, for the owner. That out, and then I can actually wind that binding off, put some glue on and fix that up myself. So that's very, very simple to fix. I've actually got a video on fixing binding. I just want to have a look while I'm here, since I'm going to fix it anyway. Um, what are we looking at? Oh, look, I don't think it's that bad, to be honest. You know, the laminate comes through here. I'm not seeing bog. I can see some rasping going on. So I've just stuck the binding just here and I'll fix that up after the uh, review is finished. You know, for $300, uh, minus the, the, the cover, which I don't really care for, doesn't look too bad. Um, one thing I was thinking is, what the heck's going on here? This is actually, that's not shugu. That's actually some sort of uh, lacquer. I do worry about that. I just feel like that's just going to chip. Uh, I don't think that's an epoxy toe or anything like that. Um, but it's hard. And the concern that I've got with really hard... Uh, toe guards like this is that if they do develop a crack it can run through and take the wood with it I'd probably want to get rid of that and do it do something different. I haven't actually weighed it It's actually got really nice pickup with all those features including that counterbalance handle I do like the way the handle feels it probably would benefit I reckon from a second grip and Yeah in my hands it feels uh, two ten and a half to eleven Okay, and you know, if you into grams, then that's uh, 212, 19. Um, so yeah, 211. Yeah, it's quite big for, for 211. So let's get on. Is this one, these Malik's, as good as a player bat in performance? So I've got my Lignum Vitae mallet. It's been oiled, so I do think it's gonna be a bit softer than it would normally be. So let's see for ourselves what it's actually like. Starting at the toe. Yeah, it feels hard. It actually feels hard. It doesn't feel soft. Um, yeah. No, it's actually going. It's actually going nice. Are we exaggerating when we say that, you know, laminates are, are just unreal? What we're saying is you're getting great performance for the money because of that sort of characteristic it adds to the wood it just makes it feel that much harder and I do actually like the fact that this that laminate is a lot uh, further away from the playing surface we did have problems with the triple x being too too close and um, actually seeing uh, pressing cracks in the face of it um, but you know that was all sorted by uh, xx they sent another bat unbelievable but you know they were charging I think 550 pounds this is 300 Australian dollars delivered anywhere in Australia. Uh, he's just doing it to help, you know, cricketers get their hands on something that's gonna go. Not bad at all, I don't mind it. Is what it is, manufactured to a price. You know, the stickers on it, these are the same, they look to be the same ones I criticized uh, with um, mids early on, the chipping. That's like a, uh, a texture that, that can crack and chip off. But that's not why you're buying this bat, you're buying it purely for, for bang for buck. And definitely, you know, like, as I tap that up. Yeah, and let's just see if it's, it is a little bit dead on those points, but. Yeah. It's 211 as well, I mean, put it in perspective. Um, but yeah, it's actually, it's going. It's definitely going, and I think with a, with a knock-in, you know hack away on a Saturday. First time I've seen a Malik. Uh, love to see more, love to see the, the higher end stuff. But yeah, I, I, don't, I haven't seen anything that, that worries me too much in this particular bat. Just the, you know, the narrowing thing, but for the price, I'm not really worried. Like, subscribe, comment, and there's also the super thanks. Yeah, that's a way of supporting the channel directly. 
uh, and all YouTubers now pretty much have that activated. But the big push now is to get to 10,000 subscribers. Uh, that's been my goal for the past two years. And obviously with COVID hitting, we sort of uh, went backwards. But yeah, I hope you like everything that I'm doing with the channel to try and improve the quality. I'll see you in the comments and look forward to showing you whatever back comes in the future. We'll see you then.